Hello everyone and welcome to episode 43 of my Guild Wars 2 Let's Play series. Today is going to be a rather interesting day because we are not going to be doing much map completion and we're not going to be doing a lot of story stuff because I want to explore well two big things in this episode. The first thing is I want to dive deep into achievements which are one of my favorite parts of Guild Wars 2 and we're going to explore a bunch of stuff to do with that. And then in the second half of this episode I want to explore the city of Lion's Arch where we will be doing some achievements in that city and just working towards I guess a little bit of map completion in that city. So starting off let's go ahead and open our hero panel here and we can come down here to our achievements page which I'm already on and we have seen this page before and we've explored it a little bit but I want to dive deep into it and in this episode I'm going to look at two main categories so the first one is general which we're just going to take a quick look at right now but this is a really like generalized achievement category as it's called general where we can find a bunch of different achievements for a bunch of different parts of the game including instance content and the open world so we have some stuff for dungeons which we'll be exploring soon and then we also have some stuff for living world season 2 which is some story content that was introduced after the game launched and then we have a bunch of other stuff down here as well leading into some road bosses as well but if you come into our slayer panel right here you can kind of see what monsters we have slain around the world so we have defeated 427 bandits so far in our let's play series because i have so far only played on this account when i'm recording and that'll change a little bit in the future as i do a few things off camera but this is everything we have done i believe zaitan's bane is our highest right now and we can come all the way down here and we can see that there are some monsters that we have not even fought yet many of whom are part of expansions and then if we come down here into weapon master it's very similar to our slayer achievements right here but we have our different weapons that we can use here so we have our sword master where we have killed five or 353 enemies with our sword and then two more things i want to look at right now is jumping puzzles which we have seen actually i want to look at three things here is jumping puzzles and we can see all these jumping puzzles we have not completed yet and when we come all the way down here we can see the jumping puzzles we have completed and we are going to be progressing this category a little bit in this episode we can also look at explorer where it's, we can see all the different regions of the world and all the dive master stuff that we have been exploring so far in the series and we have much more to go as well and we have done some mini dungeons so far and we can scroll all the way down and we have completed four mini dungeons so far in the series and then lastly let's take a look at the hero category right here where we have a bunch of different achievements related to different like stuff with the personal story and with events in the game we also have map completion right here as well and we can see we have a bunch of story chapters ahead of us but we have right here everything that we have completed so far and we have completed quite a bit of the game already we are at episode 43 so a good chunk completed but the second category that i want to take a look at today is the daily category and we have a bunch of different like pages here for different daily achievements and the primary one that i want to look at is this first one here which we could have been doing the entire time we've been playing this series but i haven't looked at it until now but basically how this works is starting off at like level one or whatever you will have a few different achievements that you can do every day in the game and as you level up you will unlock more potential things it could be and as you unlock expansions you unlock even more daily achievements that you could potentially be doing and if you are a max level on any character on your account and you have all the expansions unlocked you will have the same daily achievements as everyone else in the world playing Guilders do so you will see people flock towards these achievements and people really like to do them because every day if you complete any three out of a possible four and PV PvE, 4 in world versus world or 4 in pvp if you just complete any three you will complete the daily completionist achievement which will net you 10 achievement points for a total of 15,000 that you could earn from daily achievements which will just go towards unlocking all these achievement rewards right here you will also unlock three spirit shards which are like an in-game currency and you will unlock two gold so this is a really good way for new players to get some gold and we can see that i've just been naturally playing across eight different characters just the start of the game and i have accumulated eight gold 20 silver and 14 copper and if i had been doing the daily achievement every day that we have been playing i probably have almost or over 100 gold i would have 105 gold i think because we are on episode 43 which would be Oh, that would be 86 gold plus 8 
that would be 94 gold we would have right now. Plus we'd probably have a little bit more because we would have gotten some gold from doing all these daily achievements. But today let's go ahead and take a look at these dailies. And this is probably the only time I'm gonna showcase doing a daily in the Slough Space series until maybe way later on in the game. And I might occasionally just log on every now and then just to do the daily if it's like a quick daily, just to get some achievement points and some gold on this account because you know we like gold and achievement points. But let's go ahead and select three different achievements we can do. So we can do Ascalon Vistavir, we could do Crida Forager, we could do Fire Elemental, or we could do Wafer Foothills Event Completer, or we could do any of these PvP or Road versus Road dailies as well. And Fire Elemental is on a timer and it's not gonna happen for another hour and like 13 minutes, I believe. I just checked the timer. So we are going to ignore that one for now and we're going to do the other three PvE ones. So first things first is Daily Ascalon Vista Viewer. So we can go to literally any Vista in the game that we want to. We can go to one that we have already gotten or we can go to a brand new one and I see there's one over here. So let's go ahead and come all the way over here and we can come into a little bit of a new area in the Fields of Ruin that we're going to be exploring more next episode. But we can come up this cliffside right here and then we can loop around right here and let's go ahead and take a look at this vista So we have this charred delegation camp that is right next to the treaty grounds here in the Fields of Ruin and we have completed our daily Ascalon Vistavir. So we have completed a few of these dailies just as we've been playing naturally and we always get these chests here that we can open and we get some currency and we also get that karma there and then we have this writ of experience that we can consume just to get a little bit, it was like half a bar of experience right there. So 20 of those would be one level. But that is the first of three that we have completed. So now we can go ahead and do daily Krita Forager. So we are currently in Ascalon. So let's go ahead and return to Krita and we can come to Queensdale here. And I'll just come over to the Beetle Tent Farms because there's a lot of crops around the, these farmlands here that we can just harvest. And then once we harvest four, we will complete this daily. So there is that daily complete, so we can get our chest here, and then we can go ahead and head to, I believe it was Wafer Foothills, where we have the event completer. And now this is a little interesting, because with each of like the different game modes, there are going to be two of the achievements that are kind of considered like easy achievements and you'll get like a little bit less of a reward and there are two achievements that are a little bit more difficult and you'll get a bigger reward so for the pve dailies today we have fire elemental and the event completer which are considered harder and you can see that this chest is orange instead of yellow compared to this yellow right there and then of course the wafer foothills right here is also more difficult and I tend to find the event completer to be some of the longer achievements we could do in the game. Fire Elemental of course takes like 30 seconds of active gameplay and maybe like five minutes of AFK and of course you have to be there at a specific time but we're just going to go ahead and do Wafer Foothills event completer which should be overall decently easy for us to do and we'll just run around Wafer Foothills which is a map that we have explored like 20 episodes ago now and we'll just find a few different events. So a really nice thing about daily achievements and the fact that everyone in the world has the same exact dailies you will see people flock together and organize dailies every single day where if there's like a jumping puzzle daily you'll have a ton of mesmers that are just teleporting people to the end of jumping puzzles to make it easier for other people and with like event completers we have people that will volunteer as commanders to basically mark where events are in the map so this is going to be a little bit rough for us starting off right here because we don't have any waypoints on this character i probably should come on my norn but this is okay we can go ahead and just run through the map a little bit and i'll make my way towards these commanders here but by the time I reach any of them, the events might be completed. But we can also look out for any events along the way. So I see an event marked on my map right over here. So let's go ahead and see if we can get ourselves over here quick enough. And it looks like we have an escort event right here. So let's go ahead and help him out. It can often be difficult to tag mobs while you are doing events when there are so many people around you, especially in lower level zones 
where all the mobs are weaker and people tend to be very powerful and a lot of people tend to just want to get things done as fast as possible without really caring about like other people they just want to like go 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 and it's often not even that they're not caring it might just be that they're not really even paying attention and we leveled up to level 48 there which is nice so i'll go ahead and get this reward but it's definitely difficult for like newer people or people who don't have as much stuff unlocked on their account to be able to tag mobs for like events which is definitely a problem when it comes to this game. But that is two events complete now, so we need to find two more. So I'll go ahead and just head further north here. And I might come back down here to these groves because I know there's a bunch of events that happen right there that are on like a 10 minute cooldown. So I'll go ahead and just grab a couple waypoints, see if there's any events up here, and then head back down there. So I just asked in map chat if there were any events going on and then I stumbled upon this one about two seconds after. So let's go ahead and collect a bunch of ice worm eggs here and then bring them out towards the event person. Wish we have a ton of worm eggs that we can go ahead and turn in and that was about a third of the event so let's go ahead and go back down. And I now have 25 more worm eggs and we only need to put in like maybe one more to complete the event. So let's go ahead and turn these all in and then we have completed that event. Well, technically in like 55 seconds. So let's go ahead and find one more event somewhere. Wish I see a commander up here a little north of us. So let's go ahead and run up this way. And then hopefully this commander is at an event. And it is this event that tends to bug out sometimes because of how many people are around it when the med is going on, but let's go ahead and collect all these tattered armor and bring it in to Randy over there. So it looks like this event's bugging out a little bit as well, where the bar is not really going up that much and none of the tattered armors are really respawning. So I might try to find another event, but I'll come back every now and then when tattered armors do eventually respawn just to throw some stuff in, unless we are able to complete this event right over here, which is going on, which hopefully I am able to make it down here in time. I guess there was an another event that happens after we collected the worm eggs. But we have this worm hashing right here. I wish I was able to tag that one and then I tag the second one there. So I think we should be good with this event. Now we just have to fight a giant ice worm right there. Go ahead and throw a couple bolts on it. And now we have completed four events in Wayfarer Foothills, which was the third daily that we had to complete. So we have completed the daily completionist for the first time ever. And we now have our first 10 achievement points for completing the daily category in Guild Wars 2. And we are now two gold richer, which we have reached 10 gold. And we have a fun achievement down here called Gold Hoarder where we can hoard up to 200 gold to get an achievement where we can get a title called the golden and we'll also get 40 achievement points which is four days worth of dailies which is nice but that is everything that i wanted to explore with the daily achievements and kind of achievements but we are still going to be continuing to look at achievements because now i want to go to lion's arch and i want to explore all of lion's arch and that includes three unique jumping puzzles one of which is a very, very long jumping puzzle. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll go ahead and just run around a little bit. I'll talk about some of the cool things in the city and we'll take a look at all of the vistas. So there's probably going to be a lot of cuts in this part of the video as I kind of just run around to different places. First thing, I really kind of want to mention a fun little Easter egg here as it continues to load in as we're loading into Lion's Arch, at least, which has just appeared. But we have the Mystic Forge right here, which is a really, really cool thing that we'll explore more in the future. And it's basically like a giant crafting thing, and it's also like a big lower location. But if we jump into like the Mystic Forge here, we start walking, and if we come into the middle of it, we actually get a shot out of it like that and we are pushed away but let's go ahead and come over this way for the second thing that I want to explore which is the black line vaults which is a really cool looking building right here and we can run in here and we can see that there's a bunch of stuff to do with the black line train post specifically the gem store where we have some gem store weapons that we can look at and a bunch of other stuff which I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking at specifically but a really interesting thing right here is if you look at our map this actually goes back pretty far there are a bunch of different rooms in this area and when this was first introduced into the game we could actually explore some of these rooms where we would basically have these weapons which have all been condensed down right here they would be showcased like one set in each room and then as there were more weapon sets introduced we could go even further and we could explore more and we actually never got to the last room because they decided to just condense them down right here where we can go ahead and select let's look at snow garden i think i selected that and we can see all of that there but 
onto the next place. If we come up to here, we can see the Ashura Gate Plaza right here, where we have Ashura Gates to a bunch of different locations across Guild Wars 2, including some stuff in expansions and some stuff in a Living Road Season 1. But these connect to all the major cities in the game. So if we go ahead and just run through here, we can enter the Black Citadel Ashura Gate here, and then we're going to pop out in the Black Citadel. And this was really nice, like way back in the day, before like the new player experience update, to be able to get from like one city to another where you could like if you're a human you can run into divinity's reach and then you take the assured gate to lion's arch and then you take that assured gate to the black citadel and then you can start exploring wafer foothills but nowadays you can just waypoint over here but let's go ahead and take this exit right here and we can kind of leave like the big fortified area of lion's arch where we can see like some walls right here and it's very like built up and like it's a very defensive location now because lion's arch did get destroyed in like 2013 2014 and then we have this new city built in like 2015 and it was basically built up to be able to withstand any attack that happens again in the future so the same fate doesn't happen and the outer areas of lion's arch did change but they are kind of similar to what old Lion's Arch used to be, but like the inner areas are absolutely completely different. But let's go ahead and talk to this person here because we can do a fun thing where in order to get to this vista, we have to use this like rocket rifle right here and then we can view the vista. And then in order to get down, we can just jump down here. And then let's go ahead and come this way where we have some more vistas and things. Coming up here, we have a location that is super important for guilds, the Guild Initiative Headquarters, which we're not gonna spend too much time looking at guilds in the immediate future. And we might do it in the far future. But let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, I fell there. But let's go ahead and take a look at this vista right here that is going to show us the surrounding areas right here. And then we can go ahead and run further this way. And I'll go ahead and run down here first because here we have this waypoint right here that we can get at this like little bit of an in location, which is a little bit of an important location in the future story, which I'll just leave that as that for now. Let's go ahead and run this way where we can actually explore the first jumping puzzle in the Lion's Arch. And with the three jumping puzzles in Lion's Arch, there's one that is a little short, one that's a little medium kind of long, and then one that is exceptionally long. And this is the short one, and it's super short right here. So we can go ahead and uh, talk to this ogre right here. And he says, why must people always stare? Keep it up, and there will be consequences. We can ask, why are you here? And he says, I'm in negotiations for trade with my clan. And we can basically kind of just run up this way, and we have a tiny bit of a jumping poster right here. So let's go ahead and start up on these rocks. And then it's just classic jumping. There's not really too much stuff that goes on in this jumping puzzle, but this one can be a little bit difficult for people who are kind of newer to jumping because there's a few like tighter angles that you have to jump through. And there's like some stuff with like the like walls and the roof slash ceiling over your head, which makes it a little bit harder to jump. And a few like tricky kind of like you have to do some strafe jumping, but that was pretty much all the jumping you have to do for this puzzle. And we can just come up here and we just have a couple more things right here. Wow, I actually fell right there. And then as we reach the end right here, we just have a little bit of a running section and then we can go ahead and open up the chest that is right up here, a splendid chest. And we'll have completed Ermog's secret, which is the first jumping puzzle of Lion's Arch here. So let's go ahead and continue out this way. We can run across this bridge here that has a waterfall going over it. And then let's go ahead and head back towards the Guild Initiative headquarters and you can get the map completion objectives that are right over here. So we have this waypoint right here and we have a map portal which will take us to Lornar's Pass. It'll actually be near the Dermon Priory, which is cool. 
And then if we run over here, we have a very special location. And this is actually an area that's kind of designed for people to have player weddings, which isn't an official mechanic, but it's kind of like some role playing you can do. And you can basically see that there's like a very kind of nice garden area here. Where you could have some guests. And then of course you can have the ceremony happening right here. And it's very cute. And I believe there is a merchant over here, this florist right here. That we can talk to you and you can actually buy flowers for one gold which i'm not going to do right now because you only have 10 gold but this is a really cute area and i am actually engaged right now and my fiance and i are planning to have a little something here in the future but continuing on let's go ahead and grab this waypoint over here and then we have a point of interest and a vista and a very cool location up here called shark mall caverns so let's go ahead and run up this way and you can see we are entering an area where mounts are not allowed and that is because there is the second jumping puzzle in Lion's Arch here. This is kind of like the medium, a little bit longer length jumping puzzle. So let's go ahead and come through that flower or grass wall right there and then we can go ahead and work our way up towards the vista and the vista is at the entrance to the jumping puzzle. So let's go ahead and explore this area a little bit. And we have a little bit of jumping going on right here where we kind of just have to jump up all these rocks. And then as we get further to the top, we can see that there is going to be a little bit of a cavern drop up here. And we have a Captain of Waynet right there that we can go ahead and then see this vista. So this is a pretty fun jumping puzzle and it's a little annoying actually in some parts but overall like the theme of this jumping puzzle is super super cool and we're going to do exactly what that vista kind of suggested for us to do and we have to be a little bit careful that we actually don't fall on any of these spikes here as we fall down so let's go ahead and inch our way here and then we can go ahead and fall into the water here and we are now in a giant caverns area there and Wayne and laughed at us and now we have to work our way through this entire area and there are a few distinct sections here. So let's go ahead and work our way up here. So let's go ahead and walk up here and we have Captain Wayned right here which is basically going to help us navigate through this area a little bit and the first giant obstacle in front of us is actually a maze area where we have to work our way through a little bit of a maze that has some fake walls and stuff so let's go ahead and do just that we have strange light this way, if you want to So it's actually really dark right here, but let's go ahead and come this way. It actually looks like when it's helping us a little bit by lighting up the area here. And I can actually use my torch, which is a little fun to light up the area a little bit. So let's go ahead and keep our torch out here. And then let's run this way, I think. So I found that fake wall there. Let's go ahead and climb up here where we have a smaller section right here that we can basically kind of just, I think we can just run across the river here. We don't have to do any of those fancy jumps, but it is a little bit of a tricky area to be jumping across. And if we fall down, of course we fall back down to the start. So we really do not want to do that. So let's go ahead and work our way up here a little bit. And then as we jump up here, we have our next section, which is kind of like a trap area. So let's go ahead and be very careful here. And we can just run through all of these traps here. And then we really don't want to get hit by any of them. And we can jump over that one right there. Oh, we got hit by one right there, but that's okay. I'll go ahead and use our defense right there. And it looks like it wear it out like a second before we got hit. And then I'll go ahead and try to basically just pop up a few more defenses. And I got hit mid dodge roll right there. And I think we should be good to run through the next few seconds of this area. And I see the traps up here kind of went away as well. So let's just keep running and make a run for it. And it looks like we got through that. And we weren't really damaged too much at all. 
but now we have another jumping area that we can do right here so let's go ahead and uh, try to remember where we have to go I think we have to come up here or it's actually around right there oh it's down here a little bit I see so let's drop down here and then we have a little bit of a precarious jump right there but we can do that just fine and then we can go ahead and climb up here a little bit and then we'll have our next section which is a very dark area that I believe you will actually be a little bit fine to run through here with our torch actually but there are some torches that we can pick up if we didn't have one but you can see it's very light right here but as soon as we come down here we kind of lose out on all of that light and I might go ahead and pick up another torch if we need to but we can kind of try to work our way through here a little bit and if we go slow and steady he does what he did right there where he will show light every now and then so let's go ahead and kind of see where we have to go right here I think I can just jump straight right there and then I'll wait for the light for one more second and I'll try to memorize the next couple of jumps and let's go ahead and run up this way and then right there and I think that's all the jumps you had to do so now we are at the end here So we have a little bit of a kind of puzzle right here where we have three different options and two of them do actually kill you and you have to waypoint and come back and one will not kill you. And we get a little bit of a clue here called just remember where ye are and that will be your answer. And we can look at the three entrances right here. So we have this one and then we have this middle one right here and then we have this right one. And if you notice with the right one, it kind of looks like the entrance to the entire jumping puzzle when we first came here. And this is actually the correct answer for us. So we can go ahead and just drop down here and then we'll drop down into water instead of land. And then we have survived the fall and then we can just come around this area a little bit. I don't know, there's like a invisible wall right there. But we have the end right here where we have Captain Waynet and a magnificent chest for us. So we completed the achievement, Wayne's Revenge. Let's go ahead and open up this chest. And then we can talk to Captain Wayne right here. And he says this. We can go ahead and try to figure out a way to escape this area. Of course we could waypoint, but there's actually a broken wall right here. And then we can go ahead and just run up this way and we can return to the city of Lion's Arch. But we can come up here and talk to the ghost of First Mate Shane, where we can actually buy pirate weapons with karma, which is really cool. We'll go ahead and just take a look at the pirate slayer, which is not that way. I'm gonna right click it and then click preview and we can kind of see what it looks like right there, which is cool. But then we can also drop out from this waterfall right here into the water here and continue exploring Lion's Arch. So coming up here, we can kind of see this little bit of a small arena right here, which is like a fighting pit. And it's kind of interesting because if you look at it, it actually looks like arena net. The developers of Gilbreeze 2, it looks like their logo, which is cool. But let's go ahead and run up here where we have a waypoint right next to the entrance to Blood Tide Coast, which is a like level 40 to 50 map, I believe, or 50 to 60, 45 to 55 in between the two guesses I made right there. And then we can run up here and we can go ahead and get to this vista. So then dropping down here, we can explore what we just saw on the Vista, which is the modern version of Fort Mariner, and we saw the older version last episode. And this is kind of like, in a way, like the biggest endgame hub in Guild Wars 2, kind of, where we have the Fractals of the Mist, which is a level 80 endgame dungeon, or series of dungeons, kind of, which we will explore a lot in the future. 
but we can come over here and then we have all of the vigil stuff right there of course but if you see all these other portals right here these actually take you to road versus road locations which we could just do through our menu but if you want to come through in like a little bit more of an immersive way we can come here and then people tend to group up here every week for the road versus road reset in order to enter the maps this way and then if you come all the way over here we have two portals right here and i'm going to look at the middle one right now both are connected if you go inside but we can come through here and enter the Lion's Arch Aerodrome, which I'm just gonna take a sneak peek at, but this is the raiding hub and Guild Wars 2. And raids are no longer like the main form of content that's being produced as like the most difficult content in the game. It's now turned into something new, but this t used to be like the biggest, most difficult pieces of content added into the game. But this is 10 player content and people still play it a lot. As you can see, there's a bunch of people out right now and in the middle of the week at night, you can see all these people here. But raids are super, super fun and we'll talk more about them in the future and we'll probably hang out here a little bit in the future as well. But I got this waypoint and I uncovered the map art. So let's go ahead and return to Lion's Arch. But we have a little bit of a dock area right here with a waypoint that we can pick up and then you can go ahead and run past this airship right here and over towards this lighthouse and something really special about this lighthouse and a couple of other locations in Lion's Arch is that when Lion's Arch was being rebuilt ArenaNet, the company that develops Gilbert's 2, basically allowed people to vote for what the name of a few of the new locations in the rebuild Lions Archer would be called, and Phoenix Roost, which is the name of this lighthouse, is one of those winners, and this lighthouse has been named Phoenix Roost, compared to a few other options. I think there are like four total options for each place that you could have picked, or three total options. But we can kind of just work our way all the way up here, and then we can get a vista, and then there are some diving goggles at the top that we can explore. I am still climbing up, it's been like 20 seconds since I've said that, but I think I am almost at the top now, and just a few more turns, and I have now officially made it. Let's take a look at this vista. And we are super high up right now and we can kind of see Alliance Arch over there off in the distance. And let's go ahead and take these diving goggles and this is probably going to be the biggest jump that we've seen in the game so far. But not the biggest jump we will ever do in the game. But let's go ahead and jump off right now and then we can go ahead and fall into the water here and get credit for the diving goggle achievement here. And then we can begin exploring the water area here. And I want to take a quick moment to kind of point out a theme that was introduced with the new Lion's Arch where a lot of the buildings in Lion's Arch are kind of like sea creatures. We're here, we can see that there is a lobster. And then Fort Mariner was like a stingray. And then we will see a few of the other buildings when we go back into the main city of Lion's Arch. But let's go ahead and dive down into the water right here. But here we have a little bit of a spoiler for Living World Season 1, which we're just going to ignore. Let's go ahead and come over here and grab this vista. And if this is the vista, I believe it is, this is a really cool vista because right now what we're seeing is the old version of Lion's Arch that we explored in Guild Wars 1 which was destroyed in between Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2 and now we can kind of explore it underwater here in Guild Wars 2 but of course like the primary location where we do our services similar to how we did it in Guild Wars 1 is of course on land. But we have a cute little quaggan village right here that we can go ahead and get this point of interest from. But then let's go ahead and swim back towards the old ruins of Lion's Arch and there is a point of interest down here that we can get. So we have the point of interest right here for old Lion's Arch that we can swim up a little bit to get. And then if you come this way, we can actually explore a little bit of a special area of Lion's Arch where there's no map completion stuff in here. But there is a little bit of a, I guess you could call it a mini game, and it's called Ectoplasm Gambling. And it's basically a way for people who have a lot of gold in the game and a lot of ectoplasm, which is an in-game material, to basically gamble it away for like a very small chance to get a ton back and a more likely chance that you'll lose a bunch of stuff. And I have done a lot of this and I've completed all the achievements connected to it. And we're probably not going to do too much of it. We might do like the cheapest version of it at some point just to kind of say we did it. But we can talk to this merchant here and we can see that we can buy a glob of destabilized ectoplasm for a stack of globs of ectoplasm and a hundred gold. 
or we could buy some cheaper versions there. But this is kind of fun, but it's also a little bit problematic. And ArenaNet actually made it so you can only buy like 20 a day, which is kind of interesting in order to combat like addiction to gambling. But of course, there's a lot of discussion of that that you can kind of read up on. But let's go ahead and leave this area. And then we can get this waypoint right here, which is right next to a Tengu gate right here that heads into the domain of the Four Winds. And this is a really fun location that people really hoped would open up at some point. And we might see it in the future, hopefully. But let's go ahead and come down here. And we have a prior location right here where they're basically researching like the old lines arch and stuff. And then we can come up here to a location that is a spoiler for the Bruno Road Season 1. So we are just going to kind of ignore all of this right here. But we have a Mariner plaque right here which is actually something that we can look at because this was here before the reconstruction of Lion's Arch. And we have Kobaya Mariner, who's the founder of Lion's Arch. And this reads, we make it a free port, not beholden to any nation. The port would be open to any and all, so long as they'll fight against ore and help to keep our waters clear. Kobaya Mariner, founder of Lion's Arch, 1231 after Exodus. So let's go ahead and leave this plaque right here. And we can go ahead and continue exploring more of Lion's Arch. And there's just so much stuff in the city and we just leveled up to level 49, which is cool. And it really makes sense that there is a lot of stuff going on here and a lot of different systems and stuff that we can see uh, because this is kind of like the capital city of Guild Wars 2. Of course, there are many, many locations around the world where people can kind of like congregate to and basically hang out in and access crafting stations. And Lion's Arch is probably not the most popular of those but it's definitely kind of like designed to be like the main location of Guild Wars 2 where people can come and hang out and basically just do all their crafting and other th needs that they have to do with like the MMO and the RPG that is this MMO RPG. But if we come this way, we can go ahead and explore another really unique and interesting area. And this is basically an area where we can see a visitor right there that we'll come back for. But Arena that basically drops a ton of merchants in here, which are like limited time merchants, and also some like this tri key chest is a very old mechanic from the Rune Road Season 1 that you don't really see too much anymore. And this is basically kind of just an area where you can come to to access stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to access elsewhere around the world. So in a way this is kind of like an archive area and you can see there's all these festival merchants here with some funny looking raccoons which we'll explore in the future and then a bunch of other things right here that we can kind of see. But let's go ahead and leave this part right here and we can come over here and grab this vista which is actually a little tricky to get to. So let's go ahead and jump up on these spikes and then we can jump over here and then over here and then we have to make a little bit of a precise jump right there to explore this vista. And then that is everything in that area. So let's go ahead and run out this way. And we have a couple points of interest that are near us. So let's go ahead and get this one right here, which is kind of just like a tavern area with a bunch of merchants. And then let's run back out this way. And then we can go ahead and explore at a couple more of the bigger locations here. So we have an inn right here which we can get, which is also the Order Whispers headquarters, which we can go into if we are a member of the Order Whispers. And then we have Captain Kilo's office right there, which is a spoiler for Living World Season 1. And then we have a really cool thing right here, which is a memorial to an individual that composed a lot of music for Guild Wars 2, but unfortunately passed away. And I believe his name was Stan Lepard, and we can select music right here, and we can kind of play some of the different songs that he composed for Guild Wars 2 which is really, really cool. You can kind of see there's some apartment buildings right here, which is a little interesting, but we can't explore too much of that. But if we don't go in there, if we come over to like the next entrance right here, we can enter another little bit of an important location in Lion's Arch, where there's a couple of important merchants, specifically there's this Laurel merchant right here, and then there is a faction provisioner, which we'll explore in the future, because that is for some in-game stuff. But if we come all the way up here, we can go ahead and find this point of interest right here. And this is Crow's Nest Tavern, Captain's Council. So this is basically where all the leaders of Lion's Arch kind of hang out. So let's go ahead and come up here and then we can get this vista right here.
and then we can go ahead and drop down here a little bit and I guess I'll come over to this location first we can go ahead and get this waypoint over here sanctum harbor waypoint and then we have a point of interest right down here and then we also have a very special merchant the dive master story right here which we will be exploring in the future it's another one of those merchants for a very special part of the game that we have not yet engaged with but let's go ahead and come over here and we have yet another merchant that we can talk to uh, down there on the docks further down there where we can basically unlock some fishing stuff but in order to do fishing we have to start the end of dragons expansion which is a long long time from now let's go ahead and run back up here and we only have two more vistas and two more points of interest left to collect and we can go ahead and begin exploring the last part of Lion's Arch that I want to look at. We have the crafting area right here, so we can go ahead and get a point of interest that's not at the crafting area, but is at this frog pond right here, which is a little cool. And then we have this point of interest for the Black Lion trading post right here that we can get, which is nice. And a really cool thing with like the bank and the Black Lion trading post is going from the bank to the Black Lion trading post is actually a little fun, and we have to run back to the bank in order to run back. But if we come over here, we can see there's a little bit of a jump pad that we can jump on that takes us to this one, that takes us to this one, that takes us to this one, and then to this one, and this is the last one that will land us right at the foot of the bank right here, which is really cool. Or right next to the foot of the trading post, rather. But we have the vista over here that we can go ahead and grab this vista. And I believe we have to start it from right over here. And then we can kind of just jump up these cool looking things right here. And then on top of like this jellyfish right here. And then over here. And we now have one map completion objective left in the Lion's Arch, which is this vista over here. So let's go ahead and work our way over to it, and then we can officially complete the city of Lion's Arch. And of course, there is more stuff for us to do in the city, and most of it is going to wait for future episodes as we explore that. But let's go ahead and grab this vista before we carry on to the next part. But we have now gotten 100% map completion in Lion's Arch, so we can get that reward there. And we have now map completed all six of the major cities in Guild Wars 2, which is really, really cool. But now, I have alluded to it, we have the third and final jumping puzzle in Lion's Arch. And in Old Lion's Arch, there was actually another jumping puzzle, which was a little bit of an unpopular jumping puzzle. And they replaced it with a new one in the new Lion's Arch which is also unpopular in a way because it is a very, very long jumping puzzle. But nowadays you can kind of skip most of it just using mounts and gliding and stuff because this jumping puzzle takes place over basically the entirety of Lion's Arch. And it's been a very, very long time since I've done this jumping puzzle. I've never cheated this jumping puzzle. I've never done it with mounts and stuff. I just did it back in the day when there was only like, actually I did it before there was even gliding because this was reintroduced before Heart of Thorns. And this is, again, a very, very long jumping puzzle. And I've been recording for an hour and 10 minutes, which might be like 40 minutes into the video so far. And we're just going to go ahead and do this anyways. And I'll probably cut out a lot of it. And I did pull up the wiki page just in case I get lost because I don't want to spend a lot of time kind of exploring everything and trying to get everywhere. And I might use the raptor in a couple parts just to be a little bit of a cheat because it is definitely a very long jumping puzzle. But we have the bridge right here and I kind of just showed right here. We can jump up here to start this jumping puzzle. And let's do the first part complete the off of my memory which is probably not going to be super good but this is kind of like a fun jumping puzzle because i really really like long jumping puzzles and guild wars 2 in fact my favorite jumping puzzle in the game is probably one of the longest out of all of them and i'm already lost i think we can climb up here and then come up to the edge of the boat right here and then jump onto the roof here 
and then this is definitely not where we need to go. I think it's further that way actually. So let's go ahead and come back over to the boat here. And then I think if we come here, and then we can climb up this rope right here to get on top. Oh, careful, careful to get on top of that roof there. And then if we come this way, and then uh, is it here? I'm kind of remembering now, I think it's back this way. So let's go ahead and fall down. So then let's go ahead and come up this one. I think it's along this one. And I think we can kind of climb up here a little bit and then jump right, oh, I fell down, jump right up there. And then I think we can come over to the other one and then jump back over. I'm not entirely sure. Let's try to come all the way down to here and then try to jump. I guess it's not gonna be right there. I think we wanna get on top of this building right here. Or actually we wanna come over here it looks like and maybe we can jump onto that or just fall down. Okay, let's try this one again and we made it that time. And now we can kind of tell where not to go because they have a bunch of these like nets set up which I basically kind of supposed to like block you from going. And then we can come up here and then I see that there's a tide rope right there. So we need to get over to the other roof here, which I think I'll go ahead and throw some swiftness on me. And then we could actually use our great sword if we needed, but we can come up here and then we can come up here. And now we can come across this tight rope. So let's go ahead and come over to this area, which is now progressing into the jumping puzzle. And then we can figure out where we need to go to next, which I think we want to drop down here. This might be a mistake, but then we can jump across this way and I fell. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's this way. So let's go ahead and carefully come along here and then just carefully jump up here. And then I th think it's this way, I believe. I'm kind of just going for it. I I kind of don't want to look at the wiki. I have the page up, but I haven't looked at it yet. So let's try to get as far as I can before I kind of give up and try to get a little bit of assistance. Let's go ahead and jump along this way. And I remember there are basically four different keys that you have to collect from different chests around Lion's Arch and that's kind of suggesting we go that way but I'm pretty sure we want to go this way and you have to collect all of the chests that are scattered around in order to open up the big final chest because of course you need all four keys so I think next place we want to go is down here so I'll just give myself some swiftness and then what's the best way to navigate this I guess right here we can kind of see it's set up for us to run across I really like this jumping puzzle because it really feels kind of like parkour in like the traditional sense of parkour. Oh, we have a hidden stash right there, which I think is the first key we want. And I just saw someone kind of teleport in right there. That's a little weird. But like traditional parkour is really, I guess like stereotypically it's in like giant cities that you can basically kind of just jump on like the rooftops and make your way across the city, basically taking your own path through the city. There's kind of what we're doing in Lion's Arch right now. But let's go ahead and I think we need to come over to this one and then we have to jump around the edge of this building here potentially I'm not entirely sure uh, let's try to come back this way to get a little bit of a view here okay I really don't see a way for us to go so let's go ahead and just jump on this and see where this takes us and we can jump on this third one right here and it really doesn't look like we can actually go anywhere so I'll try to figure it out Okay, I guess I'll just go for the Hail Mary right here, and I'll jump onto this third one right here, and then uh, maybe it's down there. So let's go ahead and just try it up, up. And I have made it back here, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and utilize the wiki page that I have for the first time here. So the wiki has us going right over here, which I messed up that jump. Let's go ahead and jump up here, and then over. And then from this location, the next spot, oh, it is very similar to what I was doing beforehand, but it's actually above it. So these down here are actually kind of nice in case we fall, but we can climb up here a little bit. And then I think we want to come over right here, just inch our way right there. And then we can jump up here. And then I'm not looking at the wiki anymore. I believe we can jump up here and then over here and then up here and then I see these two things are things we can jump on I believe and get up onto that and then this one and then up here and we are very close to the first hidden stash right there which I think we just want to drop down right here so let's go ahead and give ourselves some swiftness just to make the jump a little bit easier uh, I believe that's bird poop on the roof right there let's go ahead and jump up here if we can okay I actually think I fell here but we might be able to salvage it not entirely sure. Let's go ahead and try 
and I almost made it there. Okay, I think I might have made my way back up, so <laughs> that is not a fall, and we can get this hidden stash now. And now that we progressed a quarter of the way through the jumping puzzle, I want to be extra careful here. So let's make sure we are making all of the right decisions, which I think the first decision here is to fall down here. I might go ahead and start looking at the wiki a little bit more, but let's go ahead and pop up swiftness, and then drop down here, and then I think we can climb down here and then over here and then start working our way up a little. I think from here we can jump over here and then we have a longer little bit of a like ramp right here. Oh, I jumped up here. <laughs> I think we want to come along this and I think this will take us around. I'm kind of scared that if we get too close we are going to fall into the bay here. So let's just carefully, I'm actually going to walk here a little bit and maybe I'll just walk all the way through here. This is really sketchy. I'm not sure if this is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just going to keep walking here. My body's basically off of this right now, and I just want to get to this tight rope because I think we'll be safe once we're here. So let's go ahead and come here, and then we can walk across this. And then it looks like we have to do the same exact thing again. And then from this point, I think we want to come up here. So this is indeed where we want to go, and then we can jump up here. Looks like there's a little bit of gap right there, so I'll just very carefully make our way up here. And then we can come onto the boat, I believe. From the boat, we can then jump onto the claw over there. So it's really carefully, I'm just going to edge myself down to this little bit of a ramp right here. Give myself some swiftness, which is very nice in this jumping puzzle. And then I almost jumped towards that one, but I think that would make us fall. So let's go ahead and walk up here a little bit. And then we can come Oh, up there and then jump there. Okay. And then I believe we can run up here and then it looks like the way forward is over this way so let's carefully drop down here and then every time I fall and I start falling a lot I just start freaking out but let's go ahead and give ourselves some swiftness because I think the next spot we want to jump to is right there and then carefully come around this way and I think we want to do a small jump right there and then up here to where the bird poop is and then up here and I think we can drop down right here and then just make a curved jump right there and kind of do the same exact thing, I think. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Actually, we want to come this way and then jump onto this to be able to get onto the roof here. And then we can jump over to the roof over here. And then we have another hidden stash right there. So I believe we just want to jump up to here up to here <laughs> and then we want to jump right here so i'll give myself some swiftness i feel like a lot of jumps in guild wish 2 it looks like you can't jump that high but i think this is one you can jump that high and then we can get the second hidden stash right here with the second key and now we can progress forward which i believe is over here and i think this is the hardest part of the jumping puzzle so it's coming up here at least if i remember from my own memory and then we can kind of come up here and then from here, I'm not entirely sure. I think the bird poop is kind of guiding us. And there's a net there to catch our fall, which is very nice. And then we can jump up here. Maybe this is actually like graffiti marking or something. I'm not entirely sure. And not bird poop. And then I see this tight rope right here that we can go ahead and carefully position ourselves on. And then run across right here. And then carefully get onto the second one right here. And I think there's like a super tricky jump coming up, if I recall correctly. Let's go ahead and make sure that we keep going along the tight rope. I'm just going to go super slowly there so I don't fall off at all. And then along this very long tight rope right here. And onto some stable ground and a hidden stash. I thought this hidden stash was further, but we can go ahead and collect this one. And I think we are kind of nearing the end of the jumping puzzle because I think the end is like right over there. So I think this next part here is the most difficult part of this jumping puzzle. You have to be really careful because right here there is a hole and we have to drop down and land on the netting down. Oh, I'm like kind of just going for it. Uh, let's go ahead and apply swiftness and I have the three key fragments and I'm really scared, but let's go ahead and just, okay. Okay, we made it, we made it, we're fine, and we are fine, and I was not concerned at all about this. So I think we carefully, carefully want to come right here, and then over on top of this one to then drop down 
on to that one. I'm so stressed out right now. I haven't fallen in a long time, and I probably just jinxed myself there, didn't I? Uh, and okay, my heart's starting to stop a little bit. And then I think we, oh, the bird knocked me back. That's not good. Um, can we just jump over this bird? I think we can jump over the, oh my God, my character was like off the edge. Okay, okay, we jumped over the bird. Okay, I think we want to come into here and then we do not want to fall through any of the holes here. And I made it up here and a little bit more jumping right there. And I think that is the end of this area right here, which was a very stressful area. And I think that was the hard part that I was remembering. So those birds definitely scared me a little bit. And I think right here, well, that's a fall. But as I was just about to say, I think right there would be a nice spot to fall because we would be able to kind of recover ourselves because it's just the entire jumping puzzle below us and not the out of bounds of the jumping puzzle. Another fall there. Let's just get all the falling out of my system right now before we do the last little bit of this jumping puzzle. I think we want to then come over to this area and we are now on top of this building and it looks like we want to jump this direction so let's do just that and we have to be super super careful right here because we do not want to fall and do that bird area again I think there's only a couple more left right there and we made it so this looks like a jump you cannot make but I'm gonna go for it and then we can jump up here a little bit and then we can jump back up on these smokestacks and then we have another tightrope right here and we have a person at the end of it so we can go ahead and chat with them actually but first things first is to not fall off of this and I don't see any birds in front of us and we have this kid right here stranger? who says hey what are you doing up here this is my spot go find your own place to play and I can say I'm surprised to find anyone else up here did you get up here by yourself and he says what do you think gods grown-ups can be so dense and then you can say, your mother clearly neglected to teach you proper manners. And he says, my mother taught me that respect should be earned, not given genius. Now I've got more important things to do, okay? And we can say, sure, see you around. And I think we want to come this way a little bit and just jump along this. And then this is a little bit of a stressful jump right there. But as we come right here, I think we want to then jump this way. And then we can get on top of these buildings over here. And uh, we have this tight rope right here. And I just fell. I don't think I was supposed to come here. Actually, that was not a fall. I just checked the wiki again and I did indeed have to come here. So we can then jump over this way and then this way. And I was so disappointed in myself for a second there. And I was really, really upset, but I think it's fine think we want to come here next and then we can jump up there I see a tightrope up there so I'll go ahead and give myself some swiftness and then slowly maneuver my way up here we have a, another smokestack right here looks like we want to drop down here so another purposeful fall right here and then very carefully drop right there and then it looks like we want to I think we want to jump right there that was stressful and then I'm gonna carefully, actually, I think we might just have to Hail Mary jump to that building right there, or we can just walk across this. I might've messed up the jump right here. Let's go ahead and try. Okay, I'll go ahead and just jump for it. And that was a very, very close. But I think now we want to get here, and then here, and then up here. And then we have another smokestack right here. And this looks like another impossible jump to make. Go ahead and give myself some swiftness and then up here. And then from here, we're now on top of the rope and we can go across this tight rope. I think there's another one right up here. Let's go ahead and uh, jump across this way. And then I think we wanna come right here. I think if we fall here, we have to go all the way back. I have that memory, uh, but let's go ahead and come up here. And this was the tight rope that, oh, this was the tight rope that I remember seeing when we were just down there which I think is the next spot that we want to go to. So we are very high up right now. Let's go ahead and carefully make our way across here. And we could also raptor up if you wanted to, I think, and use the raptor jumps, but I haven't done that so far, so I don't think I'm going to. Then we can go ahead and climb up here a little bit. This kind of reminds me, the spot right here reminds me of like the Valorant parkour course and like the training arena. This reminds me of like the end of that area few more smokestacks we can jump on 
and then it looks like we have this tight rope right here and then I think we are getting very very close to the end of the puzzle here so let's go ahead and come across this one and then it looks like we have to go across this one as well make sure we don't fall off right here as we approach the end we should probably be extra extra careful because we do not want to do everything over again and then we can drop down into like the apartments we were talking about earlier and I guess we can explore it a little bit more in depth than I mentioned and I think this is a relatively safe area to be in right now but I do think we want to come over here maybe let's go ahead and try to make this jump again I'll give myself some swiftness and I made it up here and I just feel inclined to go up I think we can come over here and then carefully get up here and then oh oh, oh okay I had the right plan so let's make sure we don't jump too far in one direction so we don't just jump off of the building and then we can come over here it looks like and then oh we have a hidden stash right there and then yes this is the end of the jumping puzzle but just because it's the end doesn't mean we are safe yet so let's go ahead and start making i think if we fall right here we're relatively oh relatively okay so relatively okay so let's go ahead and jump on that one relatively okay we might have to come all the way over here to get back over okay that was easy to get back to we just really want to make sure we don't fall off to the right if you fall off you want to fall off to the left and then we can come across all these and then we have a few more of these i think i can salvage that up oh, nope okay so very carefully come back over here and then we should be comfortable now okay okay i don't know why i'm having such a hard time with these jumps right here i'm probably just going to get too comfortable with coming back right here that i'm just going to fall off the side here and have to restart the entire jumping puzzle okay new ground i think I'll go ahead and jump this way and then over here give myself some swiftness again and we got the fourth and final hidden stash right here but that oh i need to clear out my inventory a little bit here but that does not mean we are done yet so let's go ahead and climb up here a little bit and then looks like we can jump onto this one and then over here and then i think we can just come up here right before my swiftness fades and i might wait a second just to give myself swiftness i see the final chest all the way over there so let's go ahead and give myself some swiftness and then very carefully jump across there and then up here and then right here we have a bunch of carrots and other vegetables and stuff and we have a nice little garden right here and we have Roland the troll because Roland had a little bit of a garden in Lion's Arch here and I think in the original jumping puzzle you actually kill the troll or something and then you basically take all of his vegetables and that's basically what we are doing right here again so we have all those vegetables I'll go ahead and clean out my inventory right there a little and then let's go ahead and jump up to here and I believe this is the final jump in this jumping puzzle and of course if we mess up this jump we fall all the way down unlike those areas back there so let's go ahead and very carefully make it and then we can go ahead and open the chest by combining the four key fragments and then opening the chest and we get the achievement Troll's Revenge and we now have a rare item which is nice and a couple of other things but the big thing here is this achievement because we've been looking at achievements this episode and we have now completed this very long jumping puzzle i think this took me like i said it was an hour and 10 minutes at the start right it's been an hour and 50 minutes now so it took me 40 minutes to complete this and i feel pretty proud of this i didn't use any mounts i don't have gliding unlocked which is nice and i don't have any other masteries and i think i only looked at the wiki like five times to kind of just point me in that direction to go and i only fell however many times it says i fell on the screen right now which is very cool but now at long last we have map completed lion's arch and we have completed the three different jumping puzzles so i might go ahead and just hang out here for a little bit and just take it all in but i think i'm going to go ahead and call this episode good here and i really hope you enjoyed watching this episode this is a little bit of a more unique episode as we explored things outside of the personal story and map completion but next episode we are going to return to the open world to complete in some more of tyria but as far as this episode goes i'm going to go ahead and call it good here and I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Remember to drink some water, check your posture, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time in the world of Tyria. Goodbye.